Okay, welcome to Asian physics, uh, Asian uh, philosophy. Um, today we are going to talk about another philosopher, probably one of the being ignored in the Asian uh, world, but I find out probably in the uh, West, people are more interested in uh, uh, this person, Wang Fuzi. Okay, because the first time I know read his thing is in the library of uh, New York University. So uh, then I start to uh, understand him from the Western world, not from the uh, 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 Chinese reading. So uh, that's the interest part. So let's go over the schedule we will do. And then today we, I think this year we start from, uh, remember, there's a three, arguably three different school in Neo-Confucianism, okay? But some people said two, okay? But anyway, I think they have a three. So uh, at the beginning of uh, this year, I introduced uh, the most important person, uh, Zhu Xi, okay? Yeah, which is in the beginning. Then uh, in the end of... Uh, End of uh, January, I introduced another person, half my school, who is Wang Yangmin. So today we are going to talk about another one. His name is Wang Fuzi, okay, which is in the 17th century. It's very close to today. And then uh, next week, I'm going to continue to move on to the uh, almost to the end of uh, Feng Yulan's short history of Chinese philosophy, which will be on the 20, 19th century, the, about the Western philosophy uh, in China. Remember, to this point, to today, all the philosophers of philosophy we I'm talking about, they don't know the European world. Some philosophers, okay, they know Buddhism, which is from India. But the Western philosophy has never been made any influence up to this point. So next week, we will introduce uh, some philosophers or uh, uh, political figures. They are being influenced by Western philosophy. So people like Dewey, like uh, uh, Kant, okay, they are familiar with these people. That's why you know next week will be very different. Wow. And start from March, uh, we will still continue as we talk about uh, every month, we will have introduced two chapters of Bhagavad Gita. So we will go through 18 chapters. And the March 11th, uh, Kwang is going to introduce another ancient poem, uh, so-called Hymn to Citrus Tree, Ju Song, which represents the southern part of Ch ancient uh, ancient Chinese uh, literature, uh, poet poetry, which represent the southern part. Uh, people are more familiar with the northern part of literature, which uh, we can call Book of the Old. Uh, people are more familiar with that, but this one is the southern part. So you can imagine during that time, probably China, you can see as a two big country, you know, one on the north, one on the south. So that's not much. Then we will move on uh, for uh, the rest of months and the year, and we will continue. Okay, so today we will talk about uh, Wang Fuzi. Again, again, he is the basic, the arguably uh, how many school we have in Neo-Confucianism. Uh, so most of people say they have a two school, the so-called uh, Li Xue, which is a universal principle, and the Xin Xue, which is a, a hard mind school. But in my opinion, and of course, there are some other scholars believe another important philosopher who his name is Wang Fuzi, we are going to introduce. And then his uh, philosophy is based, his philosophy, of course, is Neo-Confucianism. It's based on qi, okay? And I will call it the material, materialistic school of qi, okay? So that's another one. Um, and this philosopher has not been included in Feng Yulan's writing, a short history of Chinese philosophy. That's why I post the reading 
of the uh, Professor Lu. Uh, Professor Liu, uh, who, uh, she has a paper writing about Wang Fuzi's uh, philosophy, and she's the professor in uh, Cal State uh, Fullerton. So uh, I hope you read the, uh, the reading, and then we can have a discuss on this. And again, I will break down today's section to five parts. Okay, so the first part, let's give a brief introduction of uh, Wang Fuzi. So I haven't shown this history. Okay, so even uh, Fong Yulan called it the short history of Chinese philosophy. And we all know China doesn't have a short history that uh, 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 25,000 at least, you know, uh, 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 history. So uh, just this, some people's name you might familiar, okay, of course, in the 500 BC, I, I just use rough time, okay, uh, 500 BC, Confucius, and uh, Mencius, so probably 150 years after him. Then important person is around the first century, uh, about 100 BC, Dong Zhong Su, we're talking about the uh, the, the human, uh, it's also, he put the Confucius as the orthodox in the uh, Chinese thinking. Then time moved on during the time of the last sixth century, uh, they have the Buddhism coming, okay? And then uh, we talk about this on the 13th century, okay, Zhu Xi, uh, 13th century, uh, Zhu Xi start build met, uh, metaphysic foundation for Confucianism. So we call this one, at this time, all the Confucianism, we call it Neo-Confucianism. The key difference is before this time, Confucianism doesn't have a metaphysical foundation. Basically, it's just moral teaching. In the Dong Zhongshu's time, you know, they have the mystic, they talk about heaven as mystic, it's this metaphysical foundation. And after the uh, Zhu Xi, they start to make the metaphysical foundation. So after this time, in general, we will call the Confucius and become Neo-Confucianism. So the first one is Zhu Xi. He based on the principle, the universal principle of, of Qi. We talk about this one uh, at the beginning of this year and the formula and call it uh, uh, Platonic idealism. Okay, so about two weeks ago, the time moved on to the about uh, uh, after Zhu Xi, they have the Mongolian occupation, right? Kublai Khan, uh, who is uh, Genghis Khan's grandson, he occupied China for one hundred years, and after that, uh, they have the revolution at the Ming Dynasty. So another philosopher called Wang Yangming. His focus is not on the universal principle, it's more on the heart mind. So we call this school Xin Xue or heart mind school. Just one minute. We call it a heart mind school. That's what we talk about Wang Yangmin about two weeks ago. So today we talk about during this time, which is 16th, 17th century. During this time, there's another foreign invader. So the person is a Jurchen people, or you want to call it the Manchu, Manchurian, which is the people on the Northeast China and the border of Korea. So uh, Jurchen people, they invade China. So Chinese people start to lose their country again. So during that time, another reflection, Wang Fuzi, he start to try to revise Zhu Xi's uh, Neo-Confucianism. So that's the philosopher we are going to talk about for today. So to this moment, do you have, anybody have any question or any concern before I really start? I hope we I get the historical historical background. Okay, so you would know the time frame. Okay, during this time, uh, the Confucianism moved through two thousand almost two thousand years of the uh, 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 evolution. 
So if no question, I will continue on the idea of heaven. I think we talk about heaven for a long, long time. And anybody who study Chinese philosophy will face the word heaven. Uh, that's my translation. And I decide we have a long discussion on what's the right word to translate this Chinese word, so-called Tian. Okay. Uh, so in, this Tian, I translate as a heaven. And I just want to make it clear. I don't want to cause any uh, misunderstanding, right? In English word, heaven is more, or in the Christian word, heaven is more like a place, okay? But in Chinese word, this word heaven, or you want to call it the Tian, is not a place. Well, you can say a location, but it's not exactly a place. It's more like a powerful God. So you can imagine heaven probably, when Chinese talk about heaven, probably more on the sense of all powerful God and less sense on the place, heavenly, the meaning of heaven. So the concept of heaven has been run through up to today. Even in uh, the, uh, this Lunar New Year, I was in Taiwan. I still follow the tradition. We will offer the uh, sacrificial offer to heaven. Okay, So that's every year my family will do it. So this tradition has been lost for a long, long time. But the concept, philosophical concept of heaven has been changed through the years. And I just want to list the three major change, okay, in this way. So during the Confucius time, that's about, let's say 200 BC and before, when people talk about heaven, when I say people, I mean philosopher or learned people talk about heaven, they constantly connect with mandate of heaven. So heaven is just like God, you know, heaven will have control your fate, not only your fate, but it has some powerful on that. Through the first century or one century, one, 100 BC, uh, around Dong Zhongshu's time, Chinese people start to think about heaven has interaction with human. So basically the concept of interaction between heaven and the human start to come out. So that means if you did something wrong, heaven will give you a punishment. And then you did a good thing in general, okay? Then you will have a peaceful time. So heaven and the human have some interaction. So this kind of esoteric of mystic concept start to come out. Later on in the, let's say in the 10th century, after Buddhism come in, people start to find out that the, this kind of philosophy needs the metaphysical foundation. So the concept of Tian Li, I call it the principle of heaven, or you want to call it the heavenly principle, start to come out. So this kind of Tian Li, or the principle of heaven, has been important for any school of Neo-Confucius. So if we, we use 10th tenth, tenth century uh, uh, as a cut line, before that time, people hardly talk about Tian Li or principle of heaven. But after that time, the principle of heaven become the key in the uh, Confucianism. Doesn't matter which school or doesn't matter uh, you have the qi based materialistic or you have a hot mind base or principle base, the principle of heaven become very important. I've been thinking about the meaning of uh, the translation of heaven or the, the, the uh, heavenly principle. I think one concept probably is not exact correct, but one concept we can borrow is from Hegel's reason. So if we compare Hegel and Kant, when Kant talk about reason, he's more talking about the human uh, rationale, uh, ration, rationality, right? You have the reason to figure out something. But to Hegel's time, when Hegel talk about reason, it's more on the reason. So sometimes we put the capital R 
on uh, Hegel's reason. That means the reason not in your mind, your brain, it go beyond it, go outside uh, to run the nature world, the entire history. So I think the Chinese concept of the principle of heaven or so-called the heavenly principle is close to Hegelian sense of reason. That's uh, the thing I think probably will help, but you know, uh, that's up to you, but that's my own uh, 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 learning. So uh, I will put some uh, introduction on Wang Fuzi, uh, which I copy from, I summarize from uh, Wikipedia, uh, which I believe is a good summary. So Wang Fuzi was born to a scholarly family in uh, Hengyang, Hunan province in 1619. Okay. And Wang Fuzi began his education in the early Chinese class tech when he was very young. He passed his civil service examination at the age of 24. So here we mean at the age of 24, he didn't get the Jin Shi, the highest level. He, pop, he get the Ju Ren, which are in the province level, which is considered successful at the age of 24. But during that time, he was 24. They still have a civil, uh, not civil war, a foreign invasion. The Qin dynasty, the uh, Manchurian people invade China as a lot of war and a lot of turmoil uh, during that time. So his uh, career has put a stop on that. So, uh, so, so the Qin dynasty stopped and he refused to uh, pay loyalty to the Qin dynasty. So he stayed loyal to, uh, stay loyal to Min Emperor and the one first fought against the invader, which is the Manchurian people, uh, the Georgian people, then spent the rest of his life hiding from them. So basically we can see Wang Fuzi's life as a three period, right? First period, when he was born, he was just like most Chinese uh, uh, the, uh, family, okay, uh, scholar family. So they just study hard and they try to pass the exam and they get a job in the central government. But unfortunately, they have a foreign invader and then his career has to stop. And he decides to fight against the invader. But of course, it's unsuccessful. Then the last part, which is long, his, ref, uh, he, uh, ref, uh, his refugees was at the foot of mountain, so-called the Chuan San. Okay, that's the mountain, uh, so-called the Boat Mountain. Okay, from which he gained his alternative name. Okay, so basics uh, in Chinese. In Chinese, he has two names. People call him Wang Fuzi, or sometimes call him Wang Chuan San. Okay, because he uh, uh, he hide over there and uh, study over there. So he's one of the three major philosophers during that period of time. One is uh, Gu Yanwu, uh, Huang Zhongxi, and uh, Wang Fuzi. Okay, that's the uh, three people. And then uh, you, we don't have time uh, to introduce all three, but you will see by today's uh, introduction, they become more Political and more focus on the political system. So they kind of not seeing and start to talking about what's the role of emperor. Unlike before, emperor is only talk about what we need to do to the emperor and don't talk about what's emperor role, what's emperor need to do. So that's the difference during this time. And I also summarize um, uh, Wang Fuzi's uh, philosophy. And this one also from uh, Wikipedia. Uh, so basics, there's a few parts. The first is metaphysic. Wang Fuzi's metaphysics is a version of material, uh, materialism. He argued that only qi exists, li, which is a principle. Okay, remember that li is important from zhu xi, but uh, wants to argue from qi, which was the central concept of, of the neo confucian uh, uh, sort of zhu xi, and uh, doesn't exist independently. So the, the difference is 
Zhu Xi think about Di, the principle. There's a different word outside this world called Di, the word of Di. Okay. And then uh, Wang Fuzi's argument is no. There's no another word called the word of Di, the word of principle. Everything we call principle or heavenly principle is because of the operation of qi. When qi operates, the function is principle. So that's the metaphysical difference, uh, metaphysics uh, from uh, Wang, Wang Fuzi. Another thing is ethics. Wang's metaphysic idea leads him to a naturalist moral philosophy. In particular, he believed that human desires are not inherently evil, but in fact, unavoidable and an essential part of our nature. This part also makes him very different from Zhu Xi's argument. In Zhu Xi's school's argument, human, nature, human desire are bad because we crave for sex, for food, for fame, for money, everything, for the comfortable life. That's a human desire, which is bad. So Zhu Xi wants to get rid of human desire, only preserve the heavenly principle. But since Wang Fuzi's concept, the metaphysical concept is different. He talked about qi. Qi is nature. So our human desire is part of operated by qi. So in this way, human desire is nature, which within control is good. So he recognized the human desire. So that's the key difference from Wang Fuzi's uh, philosophy. So again, one believes that human desire are the main evidence of our relationship with the material world as material beings, and that human nature develops out of our material nature together with the changes that we undergo as a result of our interaction with the world we live in. So again, uh, another important philosophy he talked about is politics and the history. So uh, government should benefit the people, not those in power. History is a continuous cycle of renewal involving the gradual progress of the human society. So uh, I, I, I think I will go more detail later on in the paper uh, I post to read. Basics, his important part is talking about politics and the philosophy of the his, history. Use his metaphysics and the naturism uh, uh, understanding uh, for the uh, political part. So I will stop for uh, one minute, two minutes here. Okay, before I move to the paper I post, I just give some background, general background of Wang Fuzi and some uh, uh, information, general introduction about his philosophy from Wikipedia. So if you have a uh, question or anything you want to talk about, please yeah, raise your hand. Uh, CK, please. Oh, hi, uh, Jason. It is interesting that you encountered Wang Fuzi in a in New York library. Yeah, uh, New, York, uh, uh, New, uh, New York University. <laughs> uh, New York, New York University. Yeah, I first and collection of a Chinese philosophy, you know. Oh, that that itself is very interesting because I first encountered Wang Fuzi in a British library. <laughs> um, oh, do you agree? This he probably more famous in the Western than Chinese. Yeah, that is that is very puzzling to me because. Uh, I, I remember I, I chanced upon him while I was reading uh, tracks on Hegel's philosophy. Okay. okay. And he, he was being compared by some um, theorist or philosophers to Hegel's philosophy, especially what, the, the part whereby you just mentioned chaos and renewal. Oh, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah. History, yeah. Ah, and yeah. that the trend is uh, generally upwards which in, in to some Western or European minds sounds very Hegelian because of the, the operation of the dialectic, the thesis, antithesis, and the synthesis movement upwards of, a, of a, the, the uh, philosophy of history. Uh, so he was being compared to Hegel in that sense, which, yeah. uh, 
which which interests me, and that's the first time I I, I have uh, heard of、uh, Wang Fuzhi. I've heard of Gu Yanwu and Wang Zhongxi before、mm-hmm. then, but I have not heard of Wang Fuzhi until I encountered him in、uh, Britain. Okay,、uh, so、that's great. That's, and and the, some comment about this. I think the compared to Hegel, probably not uh, uh, that proper. You know, in China, they probably compare with、uh, Karl Marx. Okay, because he's Hegel, we can consider him as idealist, but、uh, Wang Fuzhi has been considered materialistic. Okay, materialism. So Hegel,、um, Karl Marx is doing the materialistic、uh, dialectic. Okay, dialectics. So、uh, that's why the communist China will appreciate Wang Fuzhi much with, and compare Wang Fuzhi with Karl Marx more than.、Uh, Uh, Hegel. <laughs> I understand that, but I even Karl Marx got his ideas from Hegel. Yeah, so yeah, right. That's、yeah. uh, why he was being compared to Hegel in that sense. Yes, great. Yeah, great that you talk about this.、Uh, Pin, please. Hi. Yeah, I just want to share the first my introduction to Wang Fuzhi. Actually, all three of the late Ming philosophers was actually from the popular writer、uh, Jin Yong. Okay. Wrote、yeah. these、uh, martial arts novels. Yeah.、Uh, he was a big. He,、uh, as you probably know, he was a historian as well. So he, he really admired these three. Does、so、the talk about Wang Fuzhi? In uh, Lu Dingji. Lu Dingji, yeah. In Lu Dingji, there's a lot of the background are based on these figures because、uh, you know, Gu, the Chinese triads were many of them were supposedly founded by. By Gu Yanwu, because、mm-hmm. uh, as part of his revolutionary efforts to form these secret societies to overthrow the Qin Dynasty and restore the Ming,、uh, so that that was my introduction. I was actually quite young. I, I by the way, I, at least in my own experience, I I, I it's I do not <laughs> I do not agree that、uh, he's better known in the West. I most. The okay, so historically,、uh, the great、uh, Chinese writers, popular Chinese writers in the in the nineteen early part of the twentieth century, like Liang Qichao,、uh, yeah. talked about、uh, all all three of these philosophers a lot, and also the revolutionaries that overthrew the Qin Dynasty in nineteen eleven, nineteen twelve. Uh, also mention them a lot because for two reasons, right? One was the their thoughts and their actions were anti-Manchu, and another thing was that all three of them, their son, their they seem to contain the seeds of democratic thoughts.、Mm-hmm. That、uh, so so of course、uh, these were. Uh, factors were very appealing to the revolutionaries in the late Qin Dynasty, and a lot of at least among you know people I, Chinese people I know,、uh, a lot of people know Wang Fuzhi. Whereas I, I've been in the, you know, I've lived in the West for forty years. I, I I have yet to meet someone who's not Chinese who、uh, <laughs> who brought up Wang Fuzhi. So anyway, just just a different <laughs> different experience. Yeah, if I know you earlier, then I I I I probably will draw different conclusions. <laughs> But anyway,、uh, I totally agree on、uh, your assessment. And I remember when I talk about、uh, Wang Yangmin, and somebody asked me about、uh, how about Zheng Guofan is、uh, Wang Yangmin influence Zheng Guofan, and I kind of hesitated to answer the question. But I think the More later influence, just like Pin, what you said in the revolutionary or the later part of the nineteen twenty century Chinese, they are they 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 put they they study a lot about Wang Fuzhi's、uh, theory, and then like、uh, I'm going to introduce next week、uh, is Kang Youwei and Liang Qichao, who is the. Nineteenth, twentieth century Chinese philosopher or revolutionary reformer, they all put a lot of、uh, study this uh, about uh, Wang Fuzhi. So Wang Fuzhi had a strong influence for the later part. Okay, because he, in a way, his philosophy kind of like can can easily connect with the Western thought. Ah,、uh, Mira, please. 
Uh, I missed the session on on uh, Wang Yangming. Okay. So I, I I just wonder if you could make a quick comparison between Wang Yangming or uh, and uh, 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 yeah, uh, I will uh, later. Okay, so oh, okay. Yeah, I will. I think it's important to compare them. The three, I will compare three. Uh, uh, Zhu Xi, uh, Wang Yangmin, and uh, uh, Wang Fuzhi. Okay, that's kind of represent the three schools in Neo Confucianism. Okay, so uh, shall we move on? Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, so right now we go to the paper uh, I posted online and the uh, the writer is uh, Liu Jilu. Okay, he is a, she's the professor in the uh, Kill State, um, Fullerton. Okay, so uh, his uh, her uh, writing has uh, basics. He's talking about determinism and the human uh, autonomy. Okay, because Wang Fuzi kind of support historical determinism, but he also support the human uh, autonomy. And her paper basis discussing this one. Is there any? Dilemma or conflicts, and she has her own explanation. But uh, I will focus on the first two sections, which give you um, background or philosophy of uh, Wang Fuzi. And the third part about dilemma, a lot of is her idea. So uh, just for reference. So, uh, so the first part we talk about Wang's uh, cosmology, and second part we talk about his uh, philosophy of history or you want to call it the historical determinism. So uh, the, the paper basics on the first part, part talk about his qi, Wang Fuzi's qi-based cosmology. So uh, four part, uh, she's talking about the rational naturalism, realism, and the materialism, and the holism. That's the uh, qi-based cosmology. And then um, on the second part, and uh, Professor Liu talk about the philosophy of history. So basically uh, two part, one is talking about the historical determinism and another part is talking about the human autonomy. So we continue on this one. Okay, so uh, the first part, I think is pretty good. He, uh, Professor Liu, uh, organized in the way of uh, Wang Fuzi's concept of heaven, Tian. Okay, so she said Wang Fuzi had the two set of Tian. Okay, or heaven. Okay, so first is so called Tian Zi Tian is heaven as it is. So basically, this one represent the principle of heaven or heavenly principle which doesn't have a moral sense, okay? It's just a rule, okay, operate, okay, the heaven. Another concept of heaven is heaven as seen by man, okay? So in this way, when we see the heaven, we give the moral sense. That's very typical Confucian thinking, right? So Professor Liu list uh, five important concepts, which is run, humanity, uh, benevolence, whatever you want to call, creativity, gong, which means uh, impartiality, right? Sincerity, diligence, jian, okay? That's also important in the uh, Confucius concept. That's how uh, Wang Fuzi view tian, uh, the heaven, as heaven as it is, and the heaven as seen by man. So that's the two concepts. She, uh, uh, Wang Fuzi separate. So that's how he view the nature, which Tian is a nature, but the human, when humans see the nature, human give um, the heaven its own moral meaning. So another part, uh, Professor Liu consider Wang Fuzi is a realist, or called the realism philosopher. So. Realism, by definition, is the view that what we perceive is reality itself. There's no uh, noumena, like Kant talk about noumena and phenomena, no noumena or other metaphysical realm. 
beyond our comprehension. So which will be different than Plato's idea and form, right? There's no different other world of idea or form. Everything we see is real. That's what Wang Fu, Wang Fu Zi is talking about. So if you want to compare with Zhu Xi, Zhu Xi will be take totally opposite view. Zhu Xi will be very close to Plato's idea because he believed they have the heavenly principle. They have another world of principle over there. So, so that's Wang Fu Zi's reality. So Wang Fu Zi another focus on the real world in which we are situated, not on any metaphysical realm other than this world. There's no creator or ultimate designer of the universe. And there is also no world beyond the reality that we perceive. So in Wang Fu's view, there's no creator, no great designer. Also in uh, Zhu Xi's view, even there's no creator, but they have the principle outside this one. So what you can see, Wang Fuzi's idea is become more down to the earth, focus on this world, not the transcendental world. The third part, the material objects are the function of heaven. And heaven is nothing but the totality of material object in nature. This really can also be seen as the form of materialism. So that's how, you know, the from Wang Fuzi's metaphysics, or you want to call uh, his uh, cosmology, is from naturalism to realism and uh, to materialism, materialism. So in this way, we can say, the materialism is based on the notion of qi. Okay, so he has the qi based uh, materialism. So I will talk about on the next slide. And uh, he his writing is yin yang wei ti, dao li wei yao. Okay, it translated in English is the substance is based on yin and yang, which is qi. And when we talk about dao and the principle or li, right? Dao Li means Dao and the principle is the function. So there's no principle over there. The principle is its function. A way to explain this one is uh, the multiple table. So we can ask, okay, the multiple table, the rule of multiplication, does, it, does, it, does the rule exist before human know how to calculate? So Wang Fuzi's answer will be no. There's no multiple table unless we start to calculate because the principle, which is a multiple table, exists during the function of arithmetic or during the calculation. Zhu Xi's understanding will be different. They have a multiple table. Even you don't know how to calculate because the table is there. You just not discover it yet. So another way to talk about the tip, the, the favorite subject in Chinese philosophy is Xiao, filial pirate, how you treat your parent, right? In Wang Fuzi's idea, you start to practice this Xiao, the filial pirate. You treat your parents this way, this way. You treat your parents this way. You bury your parents. You know, you mourn for three years. That's the principle of Xiao. You practice, then that's the principle. But Zhu Xi's idea will be just object, right? This principle is there. Doesn't matter you are Chinese, American, African, whoever, right? That's the principle, heavenly principle. You just discover this principle and follow it to do it. So they start to have a sharp difference. And the data on uh, the uh, professor, you start to uh, draw the conclusion. Uh, I'm not going to go to the detail, but basically draw the conclusion is his materialism is based on yin and yang. So, so here, I just make uh, clear, I don't want to mm, confuse when people talk about he is materialism. But when we talk about he is a materialism, 
we are, it's a different sense than the Western, we talk about material, right? His materialism is qi based materialism. So it's not atomist, okay? It, it's, not, uh, it's not atomist. It's not like Leibniz, monad, okay? And he also not like uh, Ionian schools, right? So-called uh, Arche, right? Arche based uh, uh, materialism, right? Like uh, uh, Sadis, we talk about everything is from water. Uh, Anaximenes, we talk about everything is from air. And Heraclitus will talk about everything is built from fire. This kind of materialism, he is based on qi. So qi is the, um, the base of his uh, materialism. Okay. So one advocates the view of materialized, so so-called materialized heavenly principle, and they reject the view of transcendental principle that promoted by Chen Yi and the Zhu Xi. Okay. And the one does not posit the principle as an abstract form governing the force. He does not give, he does not give principle any a priori status. In another way, Zhu Xi's principle is a priori. It exists before human existence. And Wang Fuzi's uh, principle basis a posteriori is when we practice and its function is a principle. So principle cannot exist outside the qi, and the qi does not exist without any, without having its own internal principle. So this is Wang Fuzi's uh, materialism, which combine principle and the qi, and the qi first, that principle. So to this point, I think about one thing, and I hope it's not will help people understand if you are familiar with uh, uh, Scottishism. Uh, in general, they like one of their favorite uh, subject is about the problem of the universal, right? Problem of universal is what is universal. Uh, when you see a dog, how do you know? The dog has many different kinds of dogs. How do you know it's a dog, right? So in general, they have the three different kinds of idea. One is called the uh, anti red That means before things. So in this way, it's Zhu Xi's idea because in God's mind, if you look at this way, okay? And another way is all Plato's idea, right? It's anti red before things, before you, I know this is a dog because they have the ideal form of dog, which is perfect dogness. So when I see something furry for deck, I know it's dog because the anti red the universal concept of dog is before the dog existence. Another idea is so-called in ray, in things, right? Which kind of like Aristotelian idea because you see my dog named Charlie, you see this dog called Buck, this dog called blah, blah, blah. I see thousands of dogs. Then they have the common parts. So I know the universal essence exists in the thing. So when I say, when I see the next one, I know it's a dog. So this one is called the in red. Or another one called the post red. That means after I learn all these things, the concept of dog is in my mind. So the, 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 the universal is in human mind. So that's the three concepts in the uh, problem, uh, in the uh, scholastic uh, uh, philosophy about universal. So if you want to map to these three concepts to Neo-Confucianism, you can see the, the anti red the, in the God's mind, it's kind of like a Zhu Xi's idea. When Zhu Xi talk about principle, the principle is outside this world, which in Chinese doesn't have the concept of God, but basics, it's in the God's mind. Let's put it this way. Another way to look at it is Wang Fuzi's idea in Ray, right? The, everything, the principle is among things. You practice 
the filial piety, then you generate the principle of xiao or filial piety. And just like uh, I think who may who asked about Myra, okay, about the uh, Wang Yangmin. Wang Yangmin talk about heart mind. So basically, it would be similar in a uh, scholastic school is talking about the post rank. Basically, everything, everything is the concept of your mind heart. So I think I find out this interesting is the if you compare Zhu Xi, Wang Fuzi, and Wang Yangmin, they kind of are similar to. Uh, in the Europe, when people talk about the uh, problem of the universal, the anti ren in ren and the post ren Okay, so this kind of concept. I, I hope this one helped, but you know, uh, it's up to you. And any question, I will stop here. I hope not. And Joe, you have a question or you have something to comment? Um, yeah, it was just a, a question uh, about the of uh, principle of chi, and it's basically um, just the uh, totality of of the yin and yang, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's uh, I'm trying to get my head around that. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Okay. Uh, pin, please. Uh, yeah, I'm also trying to uh, understand more. So the Let's say Li is, I, I, I kind of see it as the laws of physics. Uh, and okay. qi, qi is the existence of the material world. So in Wang Fuzi's view, is he saying that without the physical world, the laws of physics does not exist? That's right. That's right. Okay. So I, I would say perhaps modern science <laughs> disagrees with that because uh, now we know in, through quantum mechanics that even in vacuum, there are, well, I guess it gets confusing. Yeah. <laughs> that even in vacuum, there's energy fluctuations because uh, there's always negative and positive energy which interestingly, it corresponds quite well with the concepts of yin and yang. Uh, and, and when I was read, reading the essay assignment, uh, that, that this uh, yin and yang exists in everything, you know, that, that actually has uh, an interesting parallel with uh, modern quantum mechanics and cosmology. Um, but the, the vacuum where we, it appears there's nothing in it, it's actually, there's particles that appear very quickly, but it's both positive and negative energy so that they annihilate each other very quickly. So we can observe it. But th through experiments, you can actually measure this fluctuation. Um, so I just trying to yeah, think. I, I, I will not argue with you on this since you are uh, a, a scientist. So, uh, but let me ask you one question. Okay. Uh, so, do you agree with uh, Wang Fuzi or agree with Zhu Xi about Xiao, right? The filial piety. If there's no human, is there have a principle of Xiao, Xiao there? Or? Okay, that's different. <laughs> to me, Xiao is a human construct, right? That's, uh, that's like we, we, ha we came up with a word and we define what it is. Then of course the the word itself had no meaning before before you created the word word and defined what it is. Uh, okay, okay, right, right. Uh, then we can stop here. But basically, I think we all get the 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 point of argument here. Right, right, right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the purpose. Only that's the only purpose I want to uh, present today. I'm not going to say. Uh, who is right, who is wrong, but basics. Uh, I just want to people understand the uh, people agree, everybody agree on the disagreement. Yeah. Uh, CK, please. Can I just uh, um, could the dichotomy between Zhu Xi and Wang Fu Zhi be compared to the one between Plato and Aristotle in the sense that? Yeah. Wang Fuzhi yeah. follows more the Aristotelian 
way view of the world. I agree, actually. <laughs> okay, I see. Yeah, I totally agree. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, Feng Yulan basically put the Zhu Xi as a Platonic idealist. That's Feng Yulan put as a title. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't introduce Wang Fuzi in his writing, but he probably wanted to put it uh, Aristotelian uh, materials. Okay. Uh, mm. so, uh, I have a, a comment on from a, uh, based on what I heard from Pin uh, much earlier, in the sense that uh, Pin said that Wang Fuzi was not uh, that unknown or, or not that uh, not well known, double negative, uh, in in China. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, that familiar with what the Chinese think uh, these days, but uh, from my interactions with them, when, when I mentioned Gu Yanwu, they seem to know, and Wang, Fu, Wang, Wang Zhongxi, they seem to, to, to at least know, I've heard of him. Uh, but when you get to Wang Fu Zhi, people normally draw a blank. You know? So it's, it, seem, it seems that Wang Fu Zhi is not, not uh, as well known as the above two. Uh, uh, philosophers of the early Qing dynasty. So okay. that's, that's, yeah, my, that's, uh, and that's that's my, really, my experience. Yeah, so that's, that, yeah, that's just my comment. If you know Pin earlier, then you will draw different comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, well just, just quick follow. Yeah, I, I definitely agree that of the three, I, I believe Gu, Gu Tianling or Gu Yan was the, the best known. <laughs> and it's interesting uh, for me, if you say Wang Fuzi, I have to pause for a moment, a few <laughs> seconds before I remember. But if you say Wang Chuanshan, then yeah. I immediately know. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny day. <laughs> okay, so uh, Gu Yan will be well known because the novel, okay, the uh, Jin Yong's novel probably. <laughs> so, um, okay, so uh, this one I'd like to show and uh, the for the uh, that's I draw this uh, kind of uh, uh, dichotomy, okay? There's two ways to look at these three schools, okay? So first, if you want to separate, right, these three schools, so-called the uh, school of universal principle, universal of heart mind, and the school of qi, right? So put these three schools, or let, let me introduce their background, right? Uh, in the 11th century, we start with, I think the last year, end of last year, we introduced two brothers, the Cheng brothers, right? Cheng Hao and the Cheng Yi. Cheng Hao is uh, older, Cheng Yi is younger, and Cheng Yi lived much longer. So Cheng Hao and the Cheng Yi, right? So these two brothers, so Cheng Yi, the younger brother, focus more on the universal principle, which continued by Zhu Xi. Okay, so this school, Cheng Yi and the Zhu Xi, we call it the school of universal principle, or you just want simple called Di Xue or principal school. And then the brother, the older brother, Cheng Hao, remember we talk about him, it's like more on the uh, cultivate your heart and like to do a lot of uh, meditation. So later on, his, uh, his teaching being uh, learned by Lu Xiangshan or Lu Jiuyuan, okay, after uh, on the 12th century. And then later on, uh, we introduced two weeks ago in the Ming Dynasty, much later in the 15th, 16th century, uh, Wang Yangming, okay, he continued so called the Xin Xue, the Heart Mind School. And another school, so called Qi Xue, okay, so start from in the 11th century, the Zhang Zai, okay, talking about Qi as a metaphysical base. And Wang Fuzi inherited this kind of concept and developed in uh, his philosophy, the Qi Xue. So we have the three schools in Neo Confucianism up to this moment. So if we want to put the Category, right? If we separate as a dualism and the moism, so you can see the 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 Zhu Xi school universal principle is kind of dualism. It has the principal world and the real world. In this sense, we have he is a dualist philosopher. Xin Xue or the school of heart mind and the Qi Xue is kind of like a moism because they talk about one thing, right? Uh, 
One talk about heart, Guang Yangmin, everything is in your mind, idealist. And then Qi Xue, everything is Qi. Okay, so that's the school to separate. Another way to categorize these three schools is you put them different as idealism and materialism. Right. So in the idealism, which will be include the Cheng Yi and the Zhu Xi, which is the principle, right? And then Wang Yangmin talk about your heart mind. So basically, would be your idealism or you, and the plus. If you put in the Western concept, it would be idealism plus British uh, sentimentalist, right? So everything is your conscious from your mind. And then uh, Wang Fuzi will be a different school, would be the materialism. Okay. So that's another way to uh, categorize you know, this three school. And then I think that probably another way to yeah, understand this three school in the, uh, uh, one view. So I will stop here for uh, one minute to, for discussion before I move on to the philosophy of history. So any question or comment you want to put down uh, now? I hope this chart uh, help uh, everyone understand the uh, Neo-Confucianism and the different school in Neo-Confucianism. And in my understanding, the difference between Confucianism and the Neo-Confucianism is Confucianism doesn't have strong or good uh, metaphysical foundation. Okay. They talk about, well, that's a debatable, you know, I, I about Book of Change. And as most, I, I think the Book of Change has been added to Confucianism because the Neo-Confucianism, not the original Confucian. But again, that's just my, my opinion. Uh, Douglas, please. I think you are muted, Douglas. Hmm? Is he there? Seems like he disappeared. Oh no, he's here, he's muted. Oh. Okay, let me see. Sorry, I didn't know I was muted. Sorry. Yeah. It's um it's very you know, as a philosopher myself, to look at it, you know, and try to make sense out of it becomes, it's complex. It's, uh, you know, it's not as easy as it seems when you put it together. Oh, you think it's a confused more than uh, uh, yeah. uh, make it clear? No. Well, sorry, sorry to hear about this. And then, so probably you just ignore this chart. <laughs> so I think... I think it was helpful, actually, to be quite honest. Uh, don't matter, you know. Actually, uh, thank you for the uh, any comment. You know, uh, I know sometimes uh, additional uh, explanation confuse more. You know, and the, uh, that's I will take as advice next time. I should be, you know, be mindful on, on the uh, chart. You know. So. Thank you. You are welcome, and any comments, welcome. So, uh, uh, any other comment? Uh, CK, please. I remember now why uh, another reason why uh, uh, Wang Fuzhi was being compared to Friedrich Hegel. Friedrich <laughs> Hegel had the uh, immortal phrase that goes something like this along these lines what is real is rational what is rational is real oh okay <laughs> and uh, it is a very short paraphrase of what he actually uh, advocated but uh, i think wang fuzhi's uh, philosophy in, in the sense of uh, wang fuzhi's realism could somehow be stretched to to be comparable to what Hegel described in that sense. But do you agree? Well, that, that's what I'm thinking. I kind of think about the, the, the what is rational is real. What is real is rational. For Hegel, he probably focused more on the rational. And then for Wang Fuzi, probably focused more on the real side. 
That's my thought. Mm, yeah, it's interesting. Yes, but uh, yeah, I mean that's another reason why he was being compared uh, in 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 the the book that I I read in a British library, which I thought I, I would just uh, mention it. Yeah, yeah, that is an open question. So yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, we can move on for the next part, which will talk about his uh, uh, philosophy of history. So that's one more part I haven't talked about is cosmology. He talked about uh, the author uh, talk about the, uh, so this is a part of uh, Wang Fu's uh, holism. Uh, so basics, the logic, I think that the, paper is pretty good on this side for the educational purpose because she, Professor Liu, talk, start from Wang Fuzi's uh, naturalism, then talk about his uh, realism, then move to his uh, materialism, and then from materialism he moved, she moved from, to Wang Fuzi's uh, holism as part of Wang Fuzi's uh, cosmology. And from holism, it's easy to lead to his Wang Fuzi's uh, philosophy of history. So in the paper, holism is this the definition. Uh, the good part of this paper is every term uh, Professor Liu provide a clear definition. So that also help us to understand. So she said that holism is the view that every individual object or event is so closely interconnected in the whole system that nothing can be considered in isolation. So that's Wang Fuzi's theory, which has a chi base. So Wang Fuzi's cosmological view is holistic because in his view, all objects related to one another with their share of yin and the yang, uh, which he talked about chi, because everything is based on chi and then uh, so everything has a part of yin and the yang uh, together. So because everything contains a portion of yin and a portion of yang, it exists in the whole cosmos of qi and has a dynamic connection with other objects. In internal yin or yang can grow or decline because of the interaction of the qi of other objects. Such dynamic interaction are the result of natural state of qi and the constant competition between yin and yang. So here, Wang Fuzi can start to draw the cycle, okay, uh, the, the, the cycle. So nothing can remain close and self-sufficient. Everything must interact with other things and stand in re uh, relative opposition against each other. As a result, the history of the universe itself is a continuous manifestation of constant rotation between dominance of yin and the yang. So here, he, that's not his breakthrough, it's not his invention, because traditionally Chinese philosophy uh, uh, since Sima Qian, okay, or, uh, in the 200 BC already talked about this kind of concept, the physical of uh, the philosophy of history, right? Uh, I think I introduced this one probably many times on the five elements. So like fire, earth, uh, metal, water, and the wood. So uh, wood will uh, produce fire, fire produce earth, earth produce metal, metal produce water, water produce uh, wood. And then they will kill each other. Wood will kill earth, earth kill water, water kill fire, fire kill metal, metal kill wood. So based on this kind of five element uh, cycle, uh, people, the historian assign different dynasty, okay, with different element and to explain what's going on and which is kind of a cycle. And the Wang Fuzi just give another uh, explanation of this cycle. So he just use qi as, and the yin and yang as the base to explain this cycle. And I think the best explanation, uh, the, the best description of this cycle is uh, uh, the, 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 the novel called The Romans of the Three Kingdoms, right? So the opening, the very first sentence, uh, not very first sentence, but very, the, fir very, the first paragraph of the chapter one, 
talk about. It is a general truism of this world that anything long divided will surely unite it, and anything long united will surely divide it. Okay, so, but when he, when the translation, the in, uh, anything, basics, he talking about the country. So the country were united and uh, then disunited, united, united, disunited. And another way to talk about is one prosperity and one chaos. It's take turn. That's all been thousand years, people all believe this. And uh, then another famous saying is, the ultimate development of chaos leads to order, and the ultimate development of order leads to chaos. Or I like this translation. Chaos arises at the extreme of prosperity, and the prosperity arises at the extreme of chaos. So a little bit like Taoism thinking. Okay, so Wang Fuzi's philosophy, uh, philosophy of the history is not much different than the traditional view, but he just provide his own explanation based on his yin and yang explanation. So a little bit more detail is the human world is a part of nature and the human history is part of the continuing process of the universe. Hence, human history must also be governed by the principle of yin and yang. And the rotation of the two forms of qi, which is yin and yang, which exemplified in human history is presented as the pattern of succession of prosperity and the chaos. So prosperity and the chaos in Chinese is called zi and the luan. That's the two important concepts. So the peaceful order of one era will eventually give way to chaos in the next era. The maximization of wealth of an epoch will eventually lead to decline of wealth in the next epoch. If human history is governed by the principle of yin and the yang, and the rotation is inevitable, is human history itself set in predetermined pattern? So here's a question. So in this way, since the history can is un, inevitable, have cycle. What we human can do? Does uh, Wang Fuzi believe the historical determinacy of is he is a determinism, right? So that's the question the author posed. And then uh, she's going to uh, explain and how Wang Fuzi's uh, uh, the historical determinacy going to work with, with his idea of uh, human autonomy. So uh, question, I'm going to pause for, for a while and then uh, Mira, right? Uh, just reading through the lines, how do you govern the history with yin and yang when it's a natural process, when it's constantly, constantly changing? Um, I don't understand. Uh, excuse me. Uh, what's what? What's your question? You mean? The uh, it says the, the human history uh -huh. must be governed by uh, what, what was the word? Uh, by yin and yang. Yin and yang. Yes. How how do you govern it? How how do you do it? That's the nature. Because the yin and yang, you will, you know, yin will grow and the yang will, will decline, and to the point. Yes. You yes. Okay. But it sounds like we must govern it, like there's a like a human control. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's the next part. Uh, uh, the 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 author is going to talk about because this this uh, historical determinacy is kind of a uh, perennial concept in the uh, Chinese history. Just like I like to uh, quote on this one right in the uh, Rome, the novel, the Romans of the Three Kingdoms, talk about it's a general truism, the world, you know, it's a don't divide it, or we unite it, and the don't unite it, or divide it. So two reasons. One is, well, one is a Taoism thinking. If everything go to the top, it will go down. That's nature. And then 
Uh, another idea is because China has a long history. So you look at, you know, when the uh, every dynasty go to the peak time and then they're going down. And they're going to down, then they have the revolution, they start to going up. So uh, people see the cycle and the people don't argue on that. So Wang Fuzi provide uh, explanation of yin and yang because, you know, according to his theory, yin and the yang, you know, one grow, one down. So, you know, that, that's the, 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 the trend of history. But oh, again, yeah. Yeah. You have you ask a valid question, which is also uh, uh, the author Professor Liu is asking, right? How does the human effort, right? One way is just like mm, let's say Calvinism, right? Protestant uh, concept, okay? Pre predestinate, right? So our fate has been predetermined, right? So that's nothing you can do to change this world. Or you say we have a free will. We do, we have our responsibility to do it. Apparently, one food support the data. He support free will. He support human autonomy. So how does these two concepts work together? And that's the key uh, topic in this paper uh, that also try to address. Yeah. So he, he does, he did provide a solution. I hope so. I hope the solution okay. will satisfy, but you know, but she provided the solution on that. But for sure about the reason I provide today's uh, presentation, uh, that's the last chapter I like to present, is I really like Wang Fuzi's idea as a human base and the belief, human free will and the human can change, even the historical determines a human can change it. So, and Pin, please. So is there an underlying assumption that humans are special? Because- In, in Wang Fuzi's uh, philosophy? Right. I think, so. I, th I think in uh, all Chinese, all see human as special, right? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean- You don't think so? Because <laughs> right, as opposed to something like Christianity that definitely sees humans like God's creation. But, the, the, but, but in Taoism, human just part of nature. It's just- Oh, right now we talk about Confucianism. We're not talking about that. <laughs> yeah, but I think Confucianism too, I, 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 don't, I, I don't see any clear statement, uh, at least in you know, Confucius texts. Well, if you see that, the main shows, like you keep talking about what's the difference between man and the uh, Qin Shou, right? That's, a, right, that's also, true. That's also a big idea. So according to Zhu Xi, right? So if you let go your desire, okay? Crave for the sex, for the food, that's no different than the animal, right? So human is different. I think so they're always the center. Um, well, I think the point is that humans should do different, but if we don't try, we're no different from the animals. Oh yeah, I think so. So there's no assumption that humans somehow endowed by some divine being as opposed to other beings. Yeah, there's no assumption, but the problem is if you don't do something, you don't do whatever moral law, right? You will be, become the animal, right? Yeah, yeah, but that I can flip that around. That's an evidence that hum that they're in their in the minds of even mentions. Humans are not that different. It's just that we we have the conscience to want that he has a conscience that humans should do better than that. But yeah, it's not that somehow we are created uh, as superior to animals. So so, oh, yeah. Okay. In this point, I agree with you. Yeah. We 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 don't create spatially different than uh, animal, right? Right. Right. Yeah, in part, I agree with you. And we should behave something different, so we will not be become part of animal. Right. And, right. So what's it, what's one food view? Because I I had to. Uh, first of all, I you know the essay you had us read is excellent, but. I, I, there, there's some nitpicking I, I, with the first paragraph when they said, uh, when it comes to kind of the laws of nature governing events that are not humans, it's not controversial. But once we, we, we talk about human history where human influence comes into play, then it becomes complicated. 
I mean, first, when I read that, it made sense to me, but a second later, it doesn't because it's no difference. I mean, I can look at a, a, a group of ants and I can try to write the history of ants. And there, I see the ants, they're all working together. They want to achieve a certain kind of society. And they, they are, they're working hard. I mean, just as hard as humans to achieve certain goals and certain kind of organization, a certain, certain course of events. And I don't, I, don't, uh, I, I don't think having humans in the factor or not is, is not the, the real difference. Okay, so uh, uh, I think a, let, let me put this point of view because traditionally, I mean, in the Western tradition, right? If you are material, materialism, usually you are determinism, okay? Because materialism will bring to the mechanism, mechanical, mechan you will have a mechanic, mechanistic view of the world. So every behavior, for example, today I make this presentation is predetermined by my early study. And my early study determined by the education I received. The education I received determined by the country I was born, blah, 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 blah. So everything is predetermined. It's a mechanistic view of this world. So this world is predestinate. So that's one way to look at it because the mechanic view traditionally is this one and kind of look down on the human free will. I'm going to change. I'm going to do something. Yeah, I cannot put, put, play football because I'm too skinny. I cannot play basketball because I'm too short. I cannot change. So that's one way to look at this way. So uh, I think the here, the author, Professor Liu posed the question is since he has a materialistic view and then he has the pre uh, philosophy of history as a trend, as a cycle, how can this kind of view work or compatible with his another point of view, which is a human free will. Okay, so I think that's the key. Uh, the author is trying to argue. And then I think that's a good point to argue, but I'm not sure her argument is excellent. Okay, that's another point of view. So <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, think I, I don't want to take any more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> thank, think, you. Okay. thank you. Let's go to uh, 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 Ch Chara. Chara. Hello, good evening. Um, yeah. It was, hi, it was my understanding that uh, Confucianism was the school of thought that was adopted by the, the higher aristocratic order. Um, of that time, and as such, the the emperor and royalty and the the different uh, serving vassals were kind of seen as higher as they were kind of seen as being elevated to a higher degree, um, and that beneath them there was like a, a spectrum of, of being with uh, animals being the lowest. Uh, other human beings being, you know, their their owners and their caregivers, and um, the different, you know, officers serving as a kind of a direct line to the celestial realm. Um, is that not correct? Or that's correct. That... that that's totally correct. Okay, but uh, today we are talk. Uh, today we are talking about is talking about uh, the historical cycle, I mean, on this paper, is the historical cycle versus uh, human effort, okay? So in other words, similar, can I change the trend, right? <laughs> can I change the world, okay? Can human change the, the world, okay? I think that's the, uh, uh, the, the point of argument in the, this paper. And Kara, uh, uh, your explanation, understanding of computer is perfect, it's correct, it's very hierarchical. Thank you. Uh, Peter, please. <laughs> Sorry, I, I totally disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but because th there's always been a seed of re rebellion in Confucianist theory, right? The, when the, the mandate of heaven is that if you're a ruler, it's it's about one's behavior. It's not about one's class. So 
So if you're a ruler and you're not uh, doing the right things, people should, should uprise and, and overthrow you. And also Confucius, you know, the whole concept of Junzi, as you explained before, Jason, that Junzi used to be, used to mean before Confucius, used to mean rulers. And uh, what Confucius was use that term to describe anyone of virtue. So basically that's an equalization of the different classes. So I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, I, I think, Yes, in Confucianism has been used by rulers and distorted through history to give that impression, but that's not real Confucianism. So anyway, that, that's just my view. Okay, yeah, let's leave this one uh, open question. Basically, is what is, okay, the what should be, okay? So probably that's my understanding, yeah. Uh, uh, let's go to um, two more questions, uh, two more hands, then I'm going to move on, Douglas and the CK. Douglas, please. Yeah, here's my pot time. Um, so everything is either yin or yang uh, from what we're looking at, okay? And it's composed yin, one or the other side yang. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, that's the traditional belief or Wang Fuzi's philosophy. You know, he tried to put the yin and the yang and the, the yin and yang, they have the, the dynamic relations, the never imbalance. So that's why I have the cycle. Uh, CK, please. I believe I may have uh, a solution for this, this whole, uh problem of Wang Fuzi's predeterminism. Uh, I would like to introduce a concept called bounded free will. Right? Free will is constrained. We are all constrained by our circumstances, our environment, our education, our culture, and our daily interactions with uh, minute uh, elements. So in throughout this process, in the long run, his, his view of uh, of civilization rising and declining is still predetermined in that sense, but through the exercise of free will, and this free will is constrained and bounded by our individual experiences based on what we, we are exposed to, we could either delay it or pro delay the decline and prolong the era of prosperity, let's put it that way, uh, and uh, and that is how free will comes into play. It's called bounded free will, and I invent this concept just now. You know, bounded free will is not totally free, but you you have within certain parameters the ability to change certain things based on what you already received as uh, uh, ideas or uh, or uh, influences. So. Does that fix his problem? I think so, because uh, Professor Liu, I think the her solution kind of similar to this. Okay, so, uh, but the, 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 the million dollar question would be, uh, do you need to put the effort in? <laughs> uh, I think you could put effort in if, if, if you want, if like, I like. So think, you know uh, everything is going down, okay? So yes. I want to change. So show you put the effort. I think, that's I, what I think you could still put an effort in it because you remember Wang Fuzhi lived during the early era of the Qing dynasty. Mm -hmm. there was, he experienced decline himself and the rise of another dynasty. So by this, by what I've just described, if you have a, a this free will. capable, capable officials and a capable ruler in charge, the decline or the prosperity of the dynasty itself could be prolonged or the decline could be delayed. But eventually it will decline because that's just the course of uh, human history. You know, what goes up must come down in terms of natural physics, but in, in the human society, you know, no, no dynasty will last forever uh, or no superpower will last forever. But through the intervention of capable policies or capable uh, leaders, one could delay the decline and prolong the era of, uh, say, just for example, Pax America, for example, <laughs> Pax Americana, yeah, or or or, uh, or Pax Britannica. So that's uh, 
my view anyway. Okay, so thank you. I think that, that will be probably no sub, not too much uh, difference than uh, Professor Liu's uh, point of view. And of course, everyone has a free can uh, think about what's your solution. So uh, that's quickly go through the some definition uh, on the paper. And it's, uh, the paper say it is the view that the major, I think he defined the historical determinism. Say it is the view that the major historical events come about with a certain inevitability, that there is an independent trend of events. Some, uh, insolvable uh, necessity controlling the prosperous of human history, history under his view had not been the result of voluntary effort on the part of the individual or group of individual, but has been subject to the law of history. So that's the view of uh, historical determinism. So Wang Fuzi seems to support this view. So the question would be, is Wang Fuzi a historical determinism? And, but another question would be, does he recognize the predeterminacy of human history? So I think the second question could be no. So here is the dilemma. The, uh, uh, I think we already talked about this one, so I will skip this one. Let's talk about two things. Uh, uh, this paper to try to talk about. One, uh, she's talking about the global determinacy, uh, which is a system, is a system or a system is globally determined if each definite state of the whole system at a given time provide a necessary and sufficient condition for the occurrence of the next state of the whole system. So basically it's talking about the global view, the, it's a directional change, which is predetermined in the general pattern, just like CK talk about no superpower can last forever. And then, you know, in Chinese we we'll say 30 years is a cycle, the feng shui, the feng shui, the, uh, the, like a wheel. I think Greek also had a similar concept. And another determinacy, according to the paper, talk about the atomic determinacy. Uh, a system is atomically determined if at any given state of the whole system, the occurrence of a single unit is necessitated by other, new, other units in the same state, or the general state of the whole system provides the necessary and the sufficient condition for the occurrence of each single unit in the whole system. So uh, in, I think similar to what uh, CK talking about the bounded free will, and then it's a similar to uh, 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 the Professor Liu's solution. Okay, I'm going to jump to her solution. Okay, so basically she's, her argument, Professor Liu's argument is Wang Fuzi agree on the global determinacy, which is directional change and the general pattern, but he disagree on the atomic determinacy, of, which is the functional change or particular occurrence. So in other words, Wang Fuzi would not say, today I make this presentation is predetermined. Okay, that's my free will uh, to decide to do that. But he accepts the global determinacy because the general trend of uh, uh, the general trend of uh, the world is going this way. So, and the uh, professor you claim these two uh, accept global determinacy and reject atomic determinacy it has no conflict. And that's why she uh, provide the, that's her solution to uh, Wang Fuzi. And um, so, so here, one thing I like to talk about is uh, for local determinism. Yeah, so here I like to talk about is important is Wang Fuzi further, okay, based on this, he further defined what people's minds share in common because 
his philosophy is based on qi, which is yin and yang. So we all share this one in common. So he famously said the basic desire concerning eat, drink, men and woman, okay, is common, okay. Unlike what Zhu Xi is talking about, is preserve the heavenly principle, destroy the human desire. Fun Tian Li, choose a mere Ren Yu. That's Zhu Xi's concept. But Wang Fu Zhi will say, in Shi Nan Nu, Ren Zhi Da Gong Ye. So basic desire concerning eat, drink, men, woman. That's the common thing. So that's the key difference here. And the heavenly principle is eventually realized in human desire. Then there is no external order other than human desire that govern human history. So in other words, human desire, good or bad, will change the human history. And in this way, we see the human history indeed an autonomous history of human affairs. I think that's what uh, uh, Wang Fuzi Try or the professor Liu try to give the solution for uh, Wang Fuzi, and which I think that's what Wang. I, I don't think Wang Fuzi personally discuss this kind of uh, situation. But uh, when we read Wang Fuzi's philosophy, uh, we and in a way we all we will raise this kind of uh, question. Yeah, so. That's the last slide I want to share before I go to the discussion. Okay. So I really like what he talking about in this one in Chinese. He talks about Liu Jing Zhe Wo Kai Sheng Mian, Qi Zi Chong Tian Qi Huo Mai. I think this concept is very important and we don't see much this kind of concept in uh, uh, Chinese history. And that's why, you know. Uh, Wang Fuzi's philosophy has been uh, adopted in the later part when Chinese philosopher or Chinese uh, 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 scholar learned the Western uh, uh, philosophy. So uh, that, that's my translation. Study six classics, okay? Basically, it means study the ancient teach. Make me break the fresh ground. So, in Wang Fuzi's point of view, when I read the ancient text, he called the six classics, Liu Jing, but we generally understand it is uh, uh, ancient teaching, uh, Ananek, Mencius, Doctrine of Me, is not to follow what the ancient sage is doing, not just understand what they are doing, not just to go back to ancient world. When I read this ancient text, I have a responsibility to open a new ground, to, to create a new world, not just follow, okay? And the second part, he said, qi zi chong tian qi huo mai, seven foot man, that means seven, seven foot man, is tall man, in general, he means a jun zi or a great man, who follow the tendency of heaven, okay, the trend of the heaven, you are asking to be buried alive. So in these two uh, verse, okay, Wang Fuzi is talking about when you study the ancient text, you have the responsibility to open a new world, to create a new world. As a great person, you cannot just follow the tendency of heaven. Okay, if you do that, you just ask, just like commit suicide. Okay, so I think that's his, uh, uh, teaching here, and uh, we can see how uh, radical, okay, when you look at, you know, if you see uh, uh, how he, how different when uh, Wang Fu's uh, teaching, it, uh, this words talking about to heaven, he's not following the heaven. So this one remind me on the 600 years before that, on the 11th century, I think we talked about this last year, about Wang An Shi, who is a, okay, Wang Fu Zi is just a simple man, you know, he lost his country. And uh, we can believe that's kind of the same concept when Wang An Shi, he was the prime minister, he tried to bring the reformation for China. He said, famously, he said, 
one should not fear changes under heaven. One should not blindly follow old convention. One should not deterred by complaint of others. Okay. So you read in English, you probably not feel the radical part of this says. But in Chinese, it said one should not feel the change under the heaven. That means when heaven are angry, you should not afraid of that. You still do the right thing. So one should not blindly follow the old convention. The word he said, zu zhong bu zu fa, he talking about the ancestor teaching is not worthy to follow. Okay. He also talked about ren yan bu zu xu. When people complain, you don't, you don't have to, be, you don't care about people's complaint. You just do what's right. And that's one answer he's talking about. So uh, I bring these two uh, person together. I just want to share uh, Wang Fuzi's concept is deeply, deeply human centered, and he really believes the human effort. So I will I on purposely leave for more time, you know, because I want to have a discussion on that. So. Uh, I will stop for a moment before I go to the discussion. Okay, so any comment, question? Mira, please. So, um, Wang Xi um, oh, Fuzi. 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 Yeah. He, he didn't believe in human effort? He does, he does, he does. Okay, he, he didn't believe in human effort. Okay, but his, his concept may be different, right? His human effort should control your desire and follow the, 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 the heavenly principle. Okay. If you put it this way. Okay. Um, I don't know what to make of it, but <laughs> right before this slide, yeah. my, my feeling was that Wang Fu has no imagination. And I kind a, of, you mean um, has an imagination? I, I feel like he had no imagination. Oh, uh, no compared imagination. To, compared to, Zhu, uh, uh, what's his name, Zhu Xi. Zhu Xi. Uh, but after I read this slide, uh -huh. uh, I feel like maybe I should think twice. Maybe I should delve into um, their uh, theories deeper. Uh, to to get a better um, understanding, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, I I would say Zushi has the full of imagination because in this point of view, you can say he had can imagine they have the world outside this world. And uh, but honestly, Wang Fuzi, you can see he become more practical, and uh, they have the reason, right? Because. Uh, during that time, Chinese people lost their country to the foreign invader, right? Mm -hmm. So, and the, the Manchurian, the Jiuqin people had been considered as like barbarian and the, the low cultural people. And then uh, in the 13th century, Mongolian barbarian already uh, occupied, invade uh, entire China. And then, you know, after that, it happened again. So, to this philosopher, for this scholar, they really have to reflect what's wrong with about uh, 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 Chinese philosophy. What's wrong about Confucianism? It's been too long. You cannot get rid of a Confucianism. So next week, when we talk about the Western philosophy in China, that's yeah. that's happened again to the nineteenth century, twentieth century. The it's not barbarian invaded, that's a European invaded, right? So people start to understand the people who never heard about Confucian, Confucius has a strong power and they have a high culture. What's wrong with Confucianism? So that's another reflection happened. So that's the next week subject that we probably, uh, I, I would like to talk and which had been uh, 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 written by uh, for your lines, a short history of the Chinese philosophy. So philosophy evolves with politics? I think so, at least in China. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, CK, please. So Jason, what is Wang Fuzhi's legacy? 
Oh, I, 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 that's up to you. You know, I, 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 I will say the uh, Tang Yu Wei, uh, 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 Liang Qi Zhao, Cao, they all highly praise uh, Wang Fuzi. I'm not sure Zheng Guofan, but I will, I, I have no evidence, but I will say Zheng Guofan probably follow what Wang Fuzi do. And Wang Fuzi didn't change the scholar, the academic world, right? Because the clergy, the civil exam still follow Zhu Xi's interpretation, but his teaching, his idea, which is against Zhu Xi, probably leave the mark for the people who become more practical, you know, because Zhu Xi is really impractical, right, in this way, you know. Well, I have a, the impression that the Confucian scholars of the late 16th century or 17th century after the uh, Qing dynasty uh, was established, made a distinction between uh, losing a state, which in Chinese is called Wang Guo, mm -hmm. and losing all under heaven, which in Chinese is Wang Tianxia. Okay. So the Manchus tried to convince the Confucian scholars that uh, first they, of course, they haven't Wang Guo, and then secondly, they have a Wang Tianxia because the, 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 uh, the Manchus later on also uh, recognized and elevated Confucius to a, to a, to a, to, 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 a, to a sage and recognize him as uh, the foundation of a lot of virtues and the imperial examinations were started based on the Confucian principle. So the Manchus tried to convince the uh, conquered people that they are not foreigners and therefore yeah. uh, they are just uh, you know you could just serve under them just like uh, you could serve under the Ming dynasty yeah so, and then a few uh, after a few years of prosperity right Chinese people accept it right basic people are loyal to the Qin dynasty <laughs> yes yes so I mean is there a distinction between these two in Wang Fuzhi's writings do you know uh, Wang Guo and Wang Tianxia yeah. I, I don't know, I know, I, I don't know at this part, yeah. Um, and then, you know, it will come if you have a, a better idea, you know. And uh, Pim, please. Well, uh, just trying to answer CK's question. I, I, I Well, first I'll admit, I, I don't know much about Wang Fuji at all, but my impression is that somehow his theories were inspirational for revolutionaries. Yeah, and uh, also uh, for the Chinese communists. Uh, yeah. So the reason I, uh, I I like to put this part is um, I don't know right now the hot topic is the uh, chat uh, the 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 chat uh, chat the GPT right. So I kind of play around on this one. So um, it's pretty smart. Okay. So let me share with you. So for example, if I ask is Wang Fu Zi Let me see. Can So uh, I find out, you know, um, because uh, uh, it's interesting, okay. Uh, the, the chat GPT give a pretty good answer on this kind of in-depth question, okay. He give you, the G chat GPT give a good uh, background and talk about on one hand, Wang Fuzi emphasized the importance of materiality and the nature world in philosophy, he believed that 
uh, universal was governed by natural law and the human being could understand this law through observation and the investigation. He also reject the idea of transcendent, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then, and then uh, I'd also try to ask an opposite question, right? Is Wang Fuzi is idealist? Okay, so also give you another answer, right? So on one hand, Wang Fuzi emphasizes the importance as a moral, spiritual, you know, if I say, I believe this human being could cultivate it. So in this way, he also an <laughs> idealist. Okay, so uh the situation is this i find out it's quite interesting to check uh I, and i believe personal i believe uh chat gpt could be the new tools for uh, our future discussion uh i uh, i i i i don't feel it's a threat to to me at least i feel it's give me a fundamental background because I play around with that. They give you, give me the good answer. And uh, then uh, the thing uh, chat GPT cannot give me is there's no opinion, no, no deep answer. Okay. So it doesn't matter how you answer it. It's a very good, uh, uh, very good essay, put this way. And then I try in Chinese and uh, the Chinese is very good. Okay, the writing is, the, the, the language is smooth and scholarly and they give a wonderful answer. But again, no depth. Okay, so I the reason I want to propose this one is I find out, you know, this one give me a foundation. And then, so whatever I talk, whatever I present should be on top of this better than this. Right, so uh, that's the the way I'm looking at this way. And probably one day, you know, our discussion session will be based on Chat GPT. People post the question and have the Chat GPT have the answer. Then we analyze the answer and we can uh, dive in more depth on that and share your opinion. That could be in the future on the Chat GPT. So that's the uh, small thing I like to share, you know, on Chat GPT. And then I think it's probably quite helpful, you know, in this way. So, but just don't, uh, uh, just give me a warning. Don't be lazy. Just, you know, uh, everything from ChatGPT and then uh, there's no use for the human effort. <laughs> uh, Pim, please. Yeah, I've I've only played with chat GPT for you know probably total no more than 20 minutes. It, it seems to me like your your point out, it's it, it has an algorithm where it does, writes a very good, like a standard five paragraph kind of essay. Uh and I I, I kind of think it it reminds me of the old um in, in ancient China, the old national you know the the exams. <laughs> exactly. uh, it's it's good at writing writing like the eight legged essays. Yeah, so yeah, Chat GPT, uh, you know, if 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 it were invented, uh, you know, uh, hundreds or uh, years ago or or earlier, it, it, probably, it probably would have done very well in the exams. Yeah, and you will never be sent to jail. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> always safe. So. <laughs> So you can ask, is Jiang Kai-shek a tyrant or is uh, Xi Jinping a tyrant? And see what kind of answer you got. So. <laughs> oh, talking about Jiang Jie-shi, recently I, I, I became aware that he had been writing diaries for um, yeah. 57 years. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, um, I haven't read his stories, but uh, it seemed that he was very um, self-reflective and critical. Mm -hmm. So it seemed that he was definitely much more moral than Mao Zedong. Well, that's that's a diff to the history. I don't know because for sure that's I I I commonly say this. 
he is probably the very moral person because he, he believes he's deeply uh, Confucianism, uh, Confucius, uh, Confucianist, and he's dedicated a Christian. So he kind of followed the two best moral uh, doctrine in this world from the West and the East. But he yes, probably, uh, also he was sorry. Um, but, uh, but he doesn't he was a fan of Wang Yaming. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he doesn't guarantee he he did a good thing for to the people. So that's a different. I think it was the collective unconscious of the Chinese people at the time that placed Mao Zedong into the in in power, just like. Okay, we will talk about this one later. Uh, I just give the the uh, some head up. Okay, so next week we're talking about the uh, 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 basically about I call it the Western philosophy in China. Probably that's I sh we shall call it the Westernized Chinese Westernized Chinese philosophy. That's put this way. Probably a better subject. And then we will go to uh, Indian uh, the Bhagavad Gita, and then we will go to the. Uh, the the, uh, the, the, the some poetry okay and then another subject I like to bring in is Lu Xun okay who is the 20th century writer and then I probably will talk about is the madman's Mad, diary which is mimic the uh, Russian writer uh, Nikolai Gogol okay madman's diary and which is strong uh, uh, reject Confucianism so and uh, that we will end with uh, this uh, this novel, you know, be kind of reject, uh, crit have it, uh, how it, uh, criticize Confu Confucian uh, society. So uh, Douglas, please. There's going to be a lot of you know interesting. There's going to be a lot of changes, and there's going to be a lot of breakups, and there's going to be, uh, you know, different directions as you go on in the history of the East, because you got India, you got China, you got Japan, you got all these different places are are, are going to break up and find their own, find their own, you know, that's in the future. But still, this is a beginning part of it, the breakups and stuff. Yeah, thank you, Douglas. Uh, any comment, question? I will put the stop, okay? Anyway, 